Hello, this is Eileen, the environmental educator. And in uh, this short video, hopefully it's going to be short here, you know, we've been, everybody, it's it's in the news. I did a video about it. Um, you know, the mega drought in the West um, is the worst in at least 1,200 years. And, you know, this is uh, Lake Paul. Um, oh, no, Lake Orville in California. But look, I mean, there's the bathtub ring. That's, that's probably where the water used to go up to. And, um, <laughs> you know, this is where a lot of water levels are these days. Very, very low. Um, the, it's the most extreme mega drought in 1,200 years, uh, according to the experts. And so, you know, we know that that affects household water, water that's available for business, for agriculture, <laughs> to grow our crops and, you know, our food and to feed our livestock and for all of the manufacturing that takes massive amounts of water. Um, you know, I, I mean, so much recreation and tourist dollars are, are dependent upon there being water, whether it's in lakes, you know, like Lake Orville or Lake Powell with all these houseboats or whether it's rivers with their fishing and you know, kayaking and just everything. There's a lot of water sports out there. And with the less water, those those um, the, those dollars go away. You know, you, you can only fit so many people in, in a very reduced uh, amount of water. So, you know, not having water affects a lot of things hospitals you know they they everywhere uses an incredible amount of water and mostly you know abuses people waste water like crazy and people still haven't bought on to just responsible water habits which would really help the situation but you know one aspect of um low water and it's not just in the West, okay? You know, water sources everywhere are being drained, and even in municipalities. And um, there, there's a lot of municipalities that are trying to figure out where, where the water is going to come from in the future, or right now, it, it's drying up right now. And, um, and, and that's not just for the households and for businesses and everything that depends on it. It's also for firefighting. You know, I, I don't know if you saw, um, this is an article on uh, March 16th, updated on March 17th. This this was very um, new. A Walmart distribution center in Indianapolis caught fire. I mean, it was just black, black smoke. It, it was, it, it was, it was a big, big, big fire. And um, according to the Plainfield Fire Chief, Brent Anderson, the fire started inside the warehouse on the third floor a little before noon Wednesday. Fire crews were training in the area and were able to respond within minutes. Inside the warehouse, however, firefighters found a raging fire in, smick, in smoke so thick they had zero visibility. But what's more interesting is what um, he said down here a little bit. Let me let me find it right here. Uh, the Plainfield Fire Department officials said nearly 200 firefighters were on the scene and the operation was expected to continue for at least the next 24 hours as they wait for the fire to cool. Water supplies are in short supply. Another reason for the firefighters to fall back into a defensive position. Anderson, that fire chief, said, We've been using a lot of water and we can't sustain that long term. So we're going to have to cut back on our operations here, water consumption here. So firefighters stopped putting out a fire in, in part because it was taking too much water. Now, you know, this is a, where a Walmart distribution center. So, you know, they said everything under the sun could be on the inside of there. And, and some fires 
uh, water isn't the best thing to put them out. But um, I, I'm no firefighter, but it, it would seem that if water were available, they would have continued to shoot water on there because it, it would have had to have been doing some good in a, a lot of areas that that you know a fire does respond to water. But right here. Firefighters are cutting operations because there isn't enough water supplies. Water supplies are in short supply. So how soon until that comes to house fires? Ah, sorry, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, you know, we'd love to help you keep fighting your fire, but the city's running out of water. So. This is just, you know, something you don't think about. Everybody thinks about, you know, the households, the businesses, the, you know, the recreation, the the electricity that's generated off of dams, you know, by water sources. But this right here is something that's very alarming. When firefighters have to stop fighting fires because... We've been using a lot of water, and we can't sustain that long term. So, you know, if people would just everywhere start being responsible in their water use and conserving water, that would just be a great thing everywhere. And it's very simple to do, people. You know, you just don't let water run directly from the faucet down the drain. It's very simple that when you're at a sink doing something, if you're not using that running water, to turn it off. It's very, very simple. You know, and I know some people, um, they they have foot pedals in their kitchen faucet, even on land. You know, a lot of boats use it, and um, on land they have it. And um, that person explained to me that, well, you know, yeah, I do that because it's easy. And that's just it. Everything has to be easy for people. You know what? I turn off water when I'm not using it. And it's really easy to turn off a knob too. And that's when you're at the sink doing dishes. That's when you're, you know, brushing your teeth. People brush their teeth and water on full blast is running directly down the drain. You know, that's taking too much water to cook with. You, you, first of all, so you're using way more water than you need, so it takes a lot longer and a lot more heat to, to heat up the water. And then since you used, you know, twice as much water as you needed in the pan, and now you're throwing it out. We, we really need to be responsible with our water use because water is an in-demand commodity, and it isn't just for our everyday living and recreation and to provide us the food and the products that we depend on, but it is also to fight fires, which is something that not a lot of people think about. So I, I just thought that I would um, do a little video about that because this this is very important. This is, uh, look at these guys, man. These guys really put themselves on the line. And um, sometimes... <laughs> Sometimes the, the, the fire is just overwhelming, and it's a lot more overwhelming when you have to make a decision that there's not enough water, so you have to call it a day, okay? Because that homeowner, you know, that, that business center is um, is greatly affected, so people... Be responsible with your water. It's really easy to do, and we should really start getting respect for it because your house, your business may depend on it. So stay tuned, people.